Hi guys, welcome back to Miniature Fairy Tales. My name is Carissa and today we're going to be looking at part two of a two-part series on the creation and decoration of a china cabinet. I hope you'll enjoy. Now if you didn't get to see part one, there will be a link to part one at the end of this video. Today I'll be using two colours, raw umber and burnt umber for this piece. First up I'm starting with raw umber and essentially I've taken the smallest brush that I have and I am accentuating the natural shadows with this darker colour. The reason for this is because I am going to also be using burnt umber which is also naturally a dark colour and if I paint the whole piece in that one dark colour it may take away from um, these, these carvings that we've made. So. By using the raw umber and just um, highlighting the natural shadows, we can make sure that they'll stand out for us um, when later on when the piece is finished. It's good to get um, the colour inside the grooves and as neat as you can, but it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, this is one of those things, we're going to paint over the top of this later, so as long as you generally get the line in there, um, you shouldn't have too many problems later on down the road. And you can also see what I'm doing here. I'm not highlighting all of the edges, I'm just highlighting where the natural shadow falls. Now you'll see this video was quite challenging for me as we get through. Um, there are a couple of bits where I haven't been in frames so I've chopped them out but I really do hope that it still makes sense for you. It did for me but I was there for the whole thing so I think when you're working with things this small um, you have, um, you've got to be really careful with you know where you're working and stuff so I've done the best I can for you and hopefully um, this will get a little bit better as we go through. Again it's not just the shadows within the uh, carvings that we're accentuating, it's also the shadows in the other parts of the cabinet that we want to bring out as well. So even though these shadows are underneath on the underside, um, As I was saying, the underside, even though it is the underside, will still be noticed, so we're going to take care to accentuate all of the parts that we can. So here's an example of mahogany, and this is what we're trying to imitate today. And you can see with the red tones, it also has some darker undertones, which we're trying to mimic here today. So I'm coming in with my burnt umber now and um, you'll see that I'm keeping my brush strokes all in the same direction and all in the direction of the uh, length of whatever piece I am painting. So that is because a real piece would be um, the, the, the grain of the wood would go with the longest section or in the direction of the longest section if that makes sense. So that's why I'm painting it like this. Um, and also I'm using an angled brush here and this is helping me um, in my strokes to mimic that grain. Because this piece is so small we couldn't, um, we couldn't 
make the green with anything else and have it come out very realistic. So I found with just the brush strokes, that's enough to make it look like a wood grain. Um, and you'll see some markings on the top of the piece here. Uh, I believe they're from glue, uh, possibly. Um, so it does pay to be quite careful when you're gluing your piece together because otherwise later on when you go to paint you will find that it may interfere with your painting process. But you know, for this piece um, it gives some authenticity because wood's not perfect and um, this piece will not be perfect either. Now one thing I might have changed about this piece if I did it again was I would uh, paint the underside of the shape before I had attached the plastic to it. So at the moment, because I haven't done that, we're stuck with uh, painting the actual plastic backing of the window. Um, that's fine, it still works, but it probably would have looked a bit more authentic had I painted it before I had put the window together. It's also very important to continually turn your piece because the edges of your cardstock are going to show because uh, remember we've doubled them up so they're a bit thicker so they are going to show up in their natural color so it's important to keep turning the piece look for those anomalies so that you can fix them up as you go and uh, I'm doing that here with my tiny brush and just um, yep, doing some patchwork as I complete the rest of the piece. I get asked a lot, um, Carissa, you must have amazing eyesight to be able to make miniatures the way you do. Um, and look, my answer to that is I have 20-20 vision, uh, at least I think I do. I do get a little bit of eye strain when I'm doing things such as what I'm showing you now. Uh, but for the most part, no, you don't need really, really good eyesight to, um, to do miniatures. And I guess the other thing is there are tools out there to help you such as um, you know a pair of helping hands with a magnifying glass over the top absolutely perfect for doing miniatures you might also notice me using a skewer a fair bit um, i've just finished using the skewer um, to clear away some of the dried paint that got onto the windows um, and here i'm using it just to help me open this door it's a lot easier to use a tool like this because in miniatures of this size, your fingers get in the way a lot. So if you've got tweezers or a skewer or something like that to help you hold on to things at various times, that will help you a lot in your miniature making. And the other thing I want to remind you of is if you are painting your doors, please do make sure you leave them open to dry. Otherwise, you will paint them closed. Um, sharing this lesson from personal experience. <laughs> You can see the piece is really starting to come together and does look a lot like mahogany. I've taken my skewer again and giving those windows another going over um, just to make sure that I get any excess paint off of them. Um, and 
uh, it's pretty easy to get off actually once it's dry but please do leave it to dry um, because otherwise you will just smear it and uh, it can get quite messy so leave it to dry and it'll flake off nice and easily So that's step one complete and now I want to make some beautiful little accessories to go with this piece. Now the things you can see on my table in front of me are actually just little bits of extras that have come out of kits. So they're leftover pieces and when I finish kits I never ever um, throw bits away, I always keep them because I never know when I'll use something in the future. So you can see... Um, I've just cut out a little doily um, out of a piece of lace and I've got a little thing that looks like a chopping board here so I'm painting that. I've also got a little bead end here which was silver but I want to make gold to fit in with the rest of the piece so I've just made that gold. I've got a little bead there which will make the lid and here you'll see I've got some chopped up little polymer clay rolls and I am going to add these in. That's going to look like sweets or biscuits or something similar inside this little jar, um, which is just a little piece of rubber tubing with um, some gold paper stuck to the bottom for the base. And now I'm going to glue that bead end and pop that little tiny round bead on top. That's going to be the lid and I'll pop that aside to dry. I have this lovely little piece of blue fabric, so I'm cutting out uh, about the size of a small tea towel, and um, I'm not really sure how I'm going to use it with the piece yet, but um, I just want to add it in with that chopping board just to add um, something else to it, um, and I end up just folding it and sticking it underneath like the chopping board's been sat down on top of it as an afterthought and um, now at the moment you'll see I am making a tiny knife now this little template was actually um, part of the the leftovers from the kit that I was telling you about so um, you can see there I've cut out the template and I've used a little bit a little bit of silver paper um, for the blade and um, I've just stuck that to the chopping board and um, together the three pieces look really cute and like they're meant to be together. Now you can see here I've got a little piece of metal tubing and uh, this is just um, a, a piece of bead that I bought um, and I have placed some gold cardboard again on the bottom of this but I did it out of shot so you can't see that part of the video. Now um, this greenery again has been left over from an old kit um, so what I've done is I have taken an extra long piece and I have snapped one part of it. I'm, I filled up the bead end with glue and oh sorry the part of the bead with glue and um, I've started stuffing it in with these um, little various parts of greenery. Now um, I am doing something similar here with this brown bead. Um, I have some little plastic leaves left over from another kit so again I filled it up with glue and I'm just adding in those leaves and we'll put all that aside to dry and that will give it stability so that the leaves won't fall out and be nice and sturdy. And now just popping my little bead lid onto my sweets jar here and uh, so I've just placed a bit of glue on the top of that um, rubber tubing, placed the bead end on top and it's made a perfect little jar for our cabinet. Now on to some crockery for our cabinet. Um, now I have to give credit to another YouTuber here. Um, I cannot remember the lady's name, but this video is on YouTube if um, you want to look for it. Um, so basically I have taken images from, um, from the internet and I think I googled facing down looking at a plate or something like that and um, all these images of plates came up so I took some that I liked 
and then I um, added them as pictures into a Word document and I scaled them down until they were an appropriate size for the cabinet. Um, now, once you have done that, you can cut them out and then uh, using the palm of your hand and a ball tool, you use the ball tool to um, make curves to the edges of the plate so that it has a more realistic shape and then you give it a coat of clear nail polish. It's super, super easy. I don't know why I never thought of this before. Anyway, I if I can find the, the name of the lady who um, shows this technique on YouTube, I will definitely share it below. But um, such a great technique for little plates and they look so real at the end. It gives them the gloss and the finish that they need and also helps to make them quite sturdy as well. So you can do as many coats of the clear nail polish as you like. I think I just did one or two. Now when you're using that ball tool on the palm of your hand, um, stick it in around the middle. You want it to be in a soft area where it um, has enough flexibility to be able to move with the ball tool, if that makes sense. Now you can see here I'm using a smaller ball tool, but if you're working in a larger scale, say 112 scale or larger, um, use a larger ball tool because um, you want to make the curves of the plate match the scale that you're working in. At this point I'm just taking the platters and plates that I made and I am making sure that they're going to fit well into the cabinet. Um, and I'm also kind of figuring out where I want various pieces to go so that when it comes to the finish, I know that my parts will fit and I know that there is a spot specially for each part that I make. Um, so you can see I have done a bulk print of these plates now and um, I'm going through the motions of cutting out what I need. I won't be using all of these today, but um, I will use them for future projects. So I'm cutting out as many as I need. I'm gonna use the ball tool, um, nail polish them, stick them aside to dry, and then they'll be ready to go into the piece. And I just took a minute here to show you close up what these look like. The glossy finish just makes it, it really does. They really do look like little plates. As these are drying on your greaseproof paper, just turn them over every so often and make sure that they're not sticking. I mean, it is nail polish, so you just wanna be a bit careful with it. All right, back to the pot plant. He is going to be sitting on top of the cabinet. And so I am just going to stick the glue where I want his position to be and um, locking it into place. Now you'll see where the greenery is hanging. It is, it is not sitting in a natural position. So what we're gonna to have to do is um, use a little bit of glue down into the foliage and um, just stick that to the side of the cabinet. Now it's not gonna matter. You're not gonna see the glue because the glue dries clear. Um, but I was aware that it might cover up the pattern that we've made, um, the carving. So I've just kind of glued it down to the side of the carving, if that makes sense. But this just helps it sit in a more natural position. So I've glued my chopping board in off camera and now I'm bringing in my little doily, my little lace doily, and I'm gonna use a skewer just to help me get into the back and make sure that all the edges are pressed down. Um, it is a little bit large, but I have seen larger doilies in the past, um, so I think I can get away with it. And also gluing in my smaller pot plant and of course the little lolly jar and I made sure that went in the bottom cupboard so the kids can't see it when the doors are closed. Because to me, for some reason, this is a grandmother's china cabinet. And surprise, surprise, I'm out with a 3D pen again because as you know, if you've watched my previous videos, this is my favorite new toy at the moment. So I have made a little circular base and basically I just made that out of the top of my um, alcohol ink lid. Um, and then I used the handle of my ball tool 
as um, a guide and I basically just um, put the plastic threading over the top like a handle and I made a cute little basket. It's supposed to look like a crystal basket um, and that'll just sit in the bottom of the cabinet. And now as you can see, I am just gluing in all of my lovely little china plates. Um, so basically all I do to make them look nice and tidy is I just put a little bit of glue on the back and a little bit of glue on the bottom edge and I just sit them in resting against the back. Sorry for my head there, obviously I was having a bad hair day that day. Okay, job's pretty much done now. Close up the doors, make sure everything lines up and go and have a cup of tea. Again, I want to thank you so much for joining me today. If you'd like to see part one, there is a link at the end of today's video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. It really does help me a lot. Have a great one and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.